to my channel so we are continuing in this review of the code walkthrough of this tutorial like we started the last time so today we shall be looking at the part of the code where the author used the unpacking functionality of python to split the data frame into training validation and test set a lot is happening here and i'm going to try to demystify what's happening here uh, one by one so that we can see at a high level you will see that we have a nump split so you see that that is the high level that we have there is a split so if we check the documentation of numpy we know that what that split is doing is that it takes in an array represented by a ry and it's going to split it into multiple sub arrays okay as a view into this all right so that's at the high level what this split is doing so this split is going to take in an array and what's the array that is taken here so this is the array that it is taken that's the first part of it okay now it has the other second component which is in this case is a list and if we go back to our documentation you see that the second component is indices or sessions and it could be an integer or it could be a 1d array okay now it's easier to see understand this from an example here so what this does is that for instance, it takes this array X and it splits it using this particular uh, list. And how does the splitting happen? First, it will pick the first element in this list, which in this case is three, and will pick the first three elements in the array as the first subarray. That's why we have a zero, one, two. Then for the second subarray, it will pick the difference between the second element here, 5 minus 3, 2. Then it pick the next two elements from where it stopped. So the next two elements after 2 is 3 and 4. Then it comes here to 6. 6 minus 1 gives 1. Then it picks the next one element and put it in a separate array, which in this case is 5. Then it comes in here to 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. Then it picks the next 4 elements from where it stops. Now if you look here, you see that we only have 2 elements. Why? Because the total number of elements in our array is 8. So it picks from the next element up to 4. And here, the only element available is just 6 and 7. There are no more. So it returns just that. And after that, then it picks all the element from 10, that is 10, to the end, if there is. And if there is none, it returns empty. Because in this case, we don't have any other element left. I'd like to demonstrate this first so that we can get a better understanding of it. I think it's worth demonstrating. So let's look at it again. I'm going to put create a new stuff here. Uh, I mean, so the code set there, and I want us to see this in action. So let's run everything. Let's run all now. So what we see, I'm going to do a little bit modification on this so that we can see it. So I'm going to take this one to be, uh, to have sufficient elements. So we have two remaining here and there's none here. So let me make, add this one up to 11. Okay. So what means is that we have a number from zero up to 10. So what do we expect? So this one is going to pick from 0, 1 to 3. This one is going to pick uh, 
the difference 5 and 3 which is this then 6 and 5 which is 1 then 10 and minus 6 4 so it will pick 6 7 8 9 then the last 10 it will just pick 10 so let's see that so we see that 6 7 8 9 and the 10 it will pick from the last number up to the end so if I put this one to be 50 all these 1 2 3 4 will remain the same this one will just be from the last element to the end that's just what we have there so you can see this remains the same this will just be from the end but if I had another number here let's say I had 12 here again so it will pick the next two elements from here which is 10 and 11 if you put it in a separate subarray then the rest will be 12 to the end let's see that so you see 10 and 11 so that's what's happening there so that is the split so now coming back to this one what you now see here is the length of our data frame so you check the length of our data frame uh, I think we already have that length somewhere on top here. Um, okay, we have not done it before. So let's check the, the, the count is 11537. That is how many elements in our data frame. But another way to be able to see that in our data frame is just you can just uh, say data frame dot shape. And the first part of it is going to be the number of rows. So this is the number of columns. So we have one, one, five, three, seven. So what's happening here is that you are taking the first 80% of that. So we say 80% of one, one, five, seven. That is multiplied by the line, that is the shape. taking the first element so that is what this gives us so what means that in this array in this array that we have here the first part of our array is so the first part of our array is nine two two so it actually truncated with the integer nine two two nine so the second part of our array is nine okay so this is one zero so you truncate that that's one zero three eight three that's what that gives us so we can simply replace this list with this okay that's clear now what this sample is saying is that you are going to pick random values random um rows from this data frame according to what we read and the panda sample means you randomly sample items and the reason is you want to use it to train you only did you want to use data sets to train and you don't want uh, it to follow the sequence in which it, you collected the data you want to like shuffle the data so that there will not be any inherent sequencing or other in the data and here is saying the fraction according to what we have here the fraction talks about uh, the fraction of the axis item to return so how many so if it say 0.5 then you will sample just 50 percent and if we put one that means you want to sample all of them so in this case you want to randomly shuffle all of them now so that's clear now so we have an array here just like this array represented by x so we have a list in the first part of our list is 929 the second part of our list is 1038 so the job is done so what happened is unpacking will now happen so this whole thing is now becoming three arrays how the first array will be from 0 up to 929 just like the first array here is from 0 up to 3 
the next array the second array will be 10383 minus 929 so it will be from wherever the first array stop up to that difference just like this one is wherever this stop this array stop up to the difference between 5 and 3 which is 2 so you pick additional difference the number of element based on that difference then the last will be from 10383 up to the end just like this one is from 12 up to the end so that gives us three arrays so here we have like one two three four five six so you can now put six variables on the left hand side but in this case it's three variables and you can now uh, sample that you can unpack that so that's what's happening in this scenario I hope that makes some sense and if you see our calculation you see that this is 9229 training just like we did so this is 9229 minus is it 103 minus uh, if you want to check that see that is 10383 minus 92229 so that's what gives us that 1154 and the last will now be from 1083 up to the end which happens to be coincidental because this one is now 11537 minus 10383 all right uh, i hope that helps to understand how uh, codes are written and how to demystify what's happening in the code uh, thank you very much and uh, see you in the next one